welcome to Elizabeth Hogarth Designs. Today we're taking a look at some autumnal cards and tags that I've made using the Spellbinders Better Press system. I've used a range of products that I'll show you in a moment, but I thought it would be a nice idea for you to see how beautifully these particular uh, autumnal scenes work out we may or may end up making some more cards but here you can see I've added colour I've got it on craft cards I've got craft card and colour and then I've used some ink drops papers with some sparkle pens to complete a completely different look and then here I've made some tags using a range of the ink drops papers in greens. So rather than colouring in the toadstools, I've used the patterns on the paper to give me the autumnal hues. So let me show you the products that I've used to achieve these looks. I was immediately drawn to the Better Press toadstool. Um, this one is the Mushroom Duo, so you've got two cutting plates with the toadstool itself and the small sentiment. I also opted for the Autumn Thanks frame because I just liked all the foliage and the berries around it. And you've got another sentiment you can also cut into the frame as well. And then purely because I like the shape of this frame, I bought the uh, matching dies, which are the notched corner frames. And I can imagine being able to use them in a variety of ways. So for this particular card, I used the bigger die to cut the card base itself. And then I used the smaller nesting dies to cut the decorative paper and to cut into the plate. I also wanted to try out the new papers from Craft Consortium which are the Beach Hut range and they are weathered wood like Beach Huts, quite New England some of the colours but you've got such a range of colours that you can use these as the background so again, here's the background colours to add a blend of colours to the card. And I've also used this particular one and I stamped or used the better press to create the design directly onto the paper. Because that's the same sort of thing that I did. I used the colours from the papers to allow me to colour the images themselves. So this is a really beautiful colour palette. And I'm really pleased to say that you can also now get this particular set in an 8x8. So if you want a little bit more than 6x6 6 or 12x12 12 12 is too big, then the 8x8 8 8 is going to be a good price bracket and you can use it for a variety of things so there's a quick look at the big charts and I also found very useful for using for the background papers the ink drops range so this is the brilliant organic one which is perfect for this time of year this is my old favorite the ocean We've then got some of the older pads, which are the grunge light tones. So if colouring is not your thing, then I would highly recommend, I mean, look at those for blending in those autumnal colours. If you don't like getting mucky, you don't like playing with all the different inks and spritzes, then this particular range are really going to be versatile. And then if you want something, say, for Halloween, something a bit darker, you've got the Ink Drops Monochrome. So, again, these are all 6x6. Many of them will also be in the new 8x8 format. But let me show you how I make good use of these products along with the Better Press. 
I'm still enjoying playing with the Better Press. As time goes on, I'm using the Versafine Claire ink slightly more than I'm using the Better Press inks. They're very, very good, but I like the range of colours. So for this particular one, I wanted to bring in some more of the autumnal greens and reds. I've also found it quite useful using some small ink rollers to add the ink onto the plate itself and then you need a piece of scrap which is off to the side of me here and the ink rollers will then be rolled onto that so you don't waste any of it because you can use that as a background paper the plates have still got a little bit of color on them but they don't seem to transfer in any way so i'm quite happy with the results that i'm getting and I'm using the roller and I'm going to add some colour to the plate. I'm just going to roll this on and I find that it allows you to be more specific on where you're adding the ink. And it also means that I'm getting less ink on the plate itself, even though I have covered it with the... Um, press and seal so i'm not too bothered if it hits but um i do find this little technique quite useful so i'm going to take some of the ink off and then i'll bring in some of the red We'll get a nice blend of colours by doing this. Maybe a little bit where the toadstools are. But it's ideal for this kind of design because you want all of the colours to blend together. And as I say, you can use all of this afterwards as a background. But it's worthwhile just taking a little bit of the ink off. And then this time we'll add a little bit of brown as well. By all means, use the Better Press inks, but it's not strictly necessary. You can use what you've got in your craft stash already. This time I'm going to use a little bit of the craft cards. Um, and then I'll show you another one using the ink drops paper. This craft card is quite thick and you do get a nice um, pressed result by using the thicker card. There's no doubt that the better pressed cotton card will give you fantastic results. I did find it a little bit trickier to colour using the cotton card so i've used um watercolor pencils rather than uh using my ink pens and water but it, it's entirely up to you the main thing is is to use what you have and just enjoy the process of playing with your new tool so We'll add the card to the plates. The plates have been removed from my Sizzix Big Shot and then it's just a matter of laying the pattern on the top and then slowly rollering it through. You'll feel that the top slightly presses down and kisses the card now it's a nice slow process and you'll get excellent results the very first time so we're going to remove this and then we've got a beautifully inked up plate so this time i'm going to use the retro colors um, and this will allow me to bring some autumnal hues into 
the design without having to colour every section of it myself. So I'll pop this onto the sticky pack. If you watch my other videos, I'll explain why I use the double-sided paper rather than adding lots of tape to the project using the Vessel Fine Claire Acorn which is very appropriate and it just means that I can add the ink to the sections rather than using the bigger ink pad and getting it all over the platen. But again, I've covered this as well. So if you want top tips on how I set this up, then as I say, take a look at that previous video. Now the ink drops paper is about 160 GSM. And it's very good quality, but it's not as thick as the cotton paper so i have found that i need to add a shim or two to the top of the better press before rolling it through the machine so again we bring in the big shot and then we're very slowly and steadily run the patterns through and then you can see just how well those colours work and by the time we've cut that out we'll have a glorious autumnal scene you can of course cut it down um, and make it a rectangle and then add it to a tent card but because I've got these nice shaped eyes I'm going to cut into it again and create a, another shaped card so we'll remove the paper because of course you can't use the dies with the better press it serves no purpose and it will also mark the plate so we'll just cover this up again so that it's ready for the next inking and then i will add one of the dies to the centre here. The design is not as imprinted as you've seen me do on the cotton paper but that doesn't particularly bother me. I just like it as an illustration but if you really want that better press look then I would recommend going for a much thin thicker paper or even colouring the cotton cardstock yourself. You'll get different results every time. You can see the colours are really fabulous. And then we can highlight some of them with our glitter pens. So now we want to make our card base. So this is an A4 piece of card folded in half. And we're going to take the largest of the nesting dies and place the cutting line over, ever slightly over the fold. It doesn't have to be a lot, but you want the card to have a fold and to stay in one piece. I'll cut this excess away because I'm using the smaller machine. And then we've got ourselves a base card and then this eventually will be our 
topper and then I think we will add another layer of the big chart paper for some contrast with the topper something that is either like a green or a blue It's got hints of blue in it. Let's take these colours and see what they look like. It doesn't particularly pop, but that one would. It looks nice with the pure wood. That's nice. That's very autumnal. Well, we could have a little bit of blue and a little bit of brown. Just for effect, let's see what it looks like with the green. And if we want it to sink in, we could use the red. I quite like the effect of this blue and the brown together because that's the kind of effect I had with that one. So let's go with this blue and brown again. And then we want our second largest die. So do we want the blue at the bottom? Or do we want the blue at the side? Let's have a look. I quite like the range of colours as it's going from one side to the next and I like that the weathered wood fits in with the nature's frame theme. So now we're going to cut this out and we've got our batten layer. So we can add this onto here. And then in a moment, we'll colour this up just to give it a, an extra layer of interest. I lost a clip of film where I die cut the inner part of the frame and then I stamped it with a classic Sizzix stamp. I'll show you here with the and white. Then will, and then I will stamp it again onto the white cardstock. The stamp itself is slightly distressed, but by going in with a second layer, you can darken the look. So now we've got options when we come to put the card together. So we could turn the frame so that we've got the yellow on the top. And then we'll change it around again slightly. And we've got the red in the middle. Or we can keep it white and just have our frame and add it like so. So I think I'm going to go with some white and some extra dimension. So we will add the frame to the white card stock. Then I'm going to add the colour sentiment, but I also want to add that to the white card stock. So nothing's gone to waste. This one directly to the card but we will raise the sentiment up with a little bit of foam tape so the final thing i want to do just to add a little bit more 
interest I'm going to add I found a set of very old sparkle pens in some very random colours and I'm just going to add a little bit more definition to the design and it will add some sparkle and a tint of colour. They're all going to blend together anyway. Some of the other cards, the colour was bolder, but I like the autumnal feel of the papers. So we'll stick with it as it is. And if nothing else, it gives the card a little bit of sparkle. It might be quite hard to see on the camera but it's just adding a tint of colour to what's already in place. There we go. You can see on this card how there's just a shimmer to the surface and that the elements are ever so slightly pinker than the centre part here. So you can see how the colours are just lifted up from the design of the paper. But we will go ahead and we'll add a little bit of ink to the edges. bit of ink to this one as well even if it's just to hide the white card underneath it's worth doing just to finish off your cards and then again we're going to go yellow on the top but then yellow sentiment so oh look we've got another option here let's just see what this looks like this is what ends up I end up doing I end up trying different things until I actually think I quite like that because it's a bit different to the others let's have a look again so there we've got the blue and here we've got the wood going the other way which I quite like so let's go with option number two because we've already I decided to add a little bit more colour onto the edges here. Once the glitter pens had dried out enough, I just added a dot of red onto the berries and made some of the leaves that little bit brighter and bolder. This with very straightforward colouring pencils. So we've got another autumnal card to add to the range. I would love to know what you think of this Better Press range and which of these colours appeal to you the most. It's really nice to be able to adapt the way that the cards look just by the different use of the cardstock and those different ink drops papers. This is the card that I was mentioning earlier that... Um, this was imprinted onto the Better Press cotton cardstock and you can see the imprint here of the letterpress effect. However, I used pens on it and I did find it harder to blend, but it wasn't a problem in the end, just a different way of doing things. Whereas these ones coloured up really easily using the ink drops paper. And again, this one here, I use colouring pencils on brown cardstock. So they'll all give you different effects. And then just one more time, these are the ink drop papers that I have 
better press the toadstools with and then I die cut some flowers using Anna Marie cutting dies and then laid them up with a little bit of sisal and as you can see every one of them is different. I'm sure you will enjoy creating these autumnal cards as much as I have. Let me know in the comments below which of the projects you're going to try um, and until next time I look forward to welcoming you back to Elizabeth Hogarth Designs very very soon. Take care, bye bye for now.